Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is Lord. Well, we praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles and let's go to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Book of Colossians chapter 3. While you're doing that, please grab a pen. You know I like you to grab a highlighter and a piece of paper. Uh, a notebook. We're going to be taking some notes. We are disciples of Christ. We talked about that last week. We are students. We are learners. We are followers of Christ. We adhere to his principles. We know that we are disciples of Christ because the Bible says that we walk in love and by this shall all men know that you are my disciple, that you have love one for another. We know that we are disciples because we continue in the word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. We know we are disciples of Christ because we bring forth fruit. And Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 15 and verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bring forth more fruit, so shall you be my disciple. That's how you know discipleship. You get born again, you adhere to kingdom principles, you walk in love, you continue in the word, and you bring forth fruit. Glory to God. And Jesus said, unto you his disciples it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom and that's what we've been talking about we've been talking about kingdom concepts kingdom concepts and i said last week and i'll say it again a concept comes from the latin word watch this conception or conceive now you and i know what that means automatically we start thinking about a woman giving birth conception conceiving in the womb so a concept has to do with something taking place, a birthing taking place in the mind of God. His thoughts, his intents, his ideas, his images, his principles, his concepts. How God perceives or views a situation and then he expresses those things to us in words. In words. And then we take those words, his ideas, his concepts, his principles, his ways, his thoughts on a situation, and then we begin to apply it to our life. And then we get kingdom results. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Now, the first concept we went over was that we are citizens of the kingdom. And that is vital. We got that from the book of Colossians chapter 1, where the Bible says, Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet or qualified, fit and able to partake of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and has translated us. In other words, he's taken us out of one situation and placed us into another. Now, what did God place us take us out of and place us into? According to Colossians chapter 1, he delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So say that. I am a citizen of the kingdom. Glory to God. I have kingdom citizenship. Now, as a kingdom citizen, I have duties, rights, and privileges of that particular country. Why? Because I'm a citizen. I have rights. I have some benefits and things that belong to me as a citizen of that kingdom. I have certain responsibilities and duties. I have to abide by its laws, its principles, its concepts. And so that's what we're aiming to do. Since we are citizens of the kingdom, we need to know, well, Lord, what are your laws? What are your ways? You remember Moses? Teach me your ways. Glory to God. I've seen your acts. I know that. Okay, great. I want to know your ways now. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. We're in covenant together. I'm your very own child. You're my very own father. Uh, you're my king. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. And I want to know your ways. Glory to God. Your concept. How, how, 
How do you do things? Your principles. See? This is real to us, saints. We're citizens of the kingdom. And so last week, we talked about citizenship. Today, we're going to talk about developing a kingdom mindset. We started this last week. We're going to go a little bit further today. Say this with me. I am a citizen of the kingdom. Say this with me. I am developing a kingdom mindset. Say this with me. I will speak the word of the kingdom. And lastly, it's the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. Now let me give you a scripture for that. I just gave you that, but I'll do it again. Gospel of John chapter 15. Jesus talked about the, uh, the being the true vine, his father being the husbandman, where the branches bringing forth fruit. See, as disciples of Christ, as we adhere the kingdom principles, walk in love, continue in the word we bring forth fruit and always remember it's the father that dwells in us he's doing the works the reason why we're bringing forth fruit is because we're vitally connected to him it's our connection and covenant with him that's causing us to increase in the fruits of righteousness and to bring forth fruit to the glory of god Jesus said, herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. See, that's where God gets the glory. When we're increasing in the fruits of righteousness and bringing honor and glory to his name. Father, we welcome your presence in the studio today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit unveiling, unfolding, and revealing the truth of your words to our reborn spirits. We thank you. For the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Thank you, Father, for helping us to see and perceive. Thank you, Father, for helping us to hear and understand. Thank you, Lord, for revelation from heaven, for your spirit unveiling, unfolding, and revealing the truth of your word to our spirits. The entrance of your word gives us light. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. We humble ourselves before the authority of the word. We magnify your word above all of our lifestyle, above our degrees, our titles, our status. We accept your word as final authority today. We thank you that your word is forever settled in heaven. And we thank you for teaching us your kingdom concepts in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians chapter 3. Let's go to verse 1. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Praise God. Today we're going to continue our lesson on developing a kingdom mindset. Developing a kingdom mindset. Now, we already discussed last week that when we talk about developing, it's a powerful word, write this down. When you develop something, you're causing it to grow, you're making it bigger or you're causing it to advance did you get that you're making it bigger you're causing it to grow you want it to be more advanced you are developing just like you develop your muscles you work them you exercise you do your curls you do your tricep you work your chest you work your back and you start working on your lats and you start doing all kind of curls and getting your forearms strong and it's just like you're developing it's a lifestyle it takes discipline. That's why Jesus calls us to discipleship. He wants us to be disciplined in the word. Where we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Workmen that need not to be ashamed. We rightly divide the word of truth. We exercise our faith. And we get nursed up in the words of faith. And we develop a kingdom mindset. Are you getting all this? Now, we are working on something. When we're developing a kingdom mindset, we want to bring out all of its capabilities. 
We want to bring out the possibilities of a kingdom lifestyle. I'm talking about living on a higher level, above the norm. Not living like everybody else. Living above sickness and disease. Above poverty, grief, and sorrow. Above depression. Above despondency. Above debt. Glory to God. Where we live our lives here on earth as it is in heaven. I'll say it another way. Where we can have a little bit of heaven on earth. Glory to God. And in order to do that, we have to take God's concepts, His principles, how he does things in heaven, and then begin to apply them to our everyday lives here on earth. And when you do that, we improve the quality of our lives. We improve the quality of the lives of the people around us. We improve the quality of lives of our children, the people in our workplace, our community, our government. Yeah, when well, we begin to take kingdom principles and put them into practice. Are you listening to me? And so we develop, we cause to grow, we make things bigger and more advanced. We're developing a kingdom mindset. We're working on something. Tell somebody, I'm a working on something. Glory to God. And that's why we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Now, Go with me, please, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Matthew, chapter 7. I, I want to I work on this development piece for a moment. Because we need to learn how to develop a kingdom mindset. If you remember, I said last week, in 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible says, we have the mind of Christ. That's in the Bible. We have the mind of Christ. The Amplified Bible says, we have his thoughts and his purposes. In other words, we have the intents of his heart. God's mindset, how, how he thinks about a certain situation. His ways. You remember what he said through the prophet Isaiah? My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. He said there is high above the earth. As the heavens, watch this, are over the earth. He said, my thoughts are high. They're on a whole nother level. See? And he admonished us, seek my ways. For, forsake your thoughts. For, forsake your ways. And seek mine. I'm on another level. I'm thinking higher. See? And that's what we want. We want the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God in our lives. See? And as we have the mind of Christ, it has to be developed. You remember what I said last week? Everything God gives us has to be developed. Everything God gives us is in seed form. It has to be cultivated. You have to work it. The Bible says to work out your salvation. You have to do that. You have to present yourself before the Lord a living sacrifice. You have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You have to do that. You have to not be conformed. That's in the Bible. You and I have to do that. We have, as citizens of the kingdom, certain responsibilities, certain duties as citizens of the kingdom. There are some things that are required of you and that are required of me as citizens of the kingdom. And one of those things is that we be renewed in the spirit of our mind, that we develop develop this kingdom mindset that we learn, listen, that we learn God's laws, his precepts, his concepts, his ideas, his principles, and then we begin to implement them, apply them to our lives, and improve the quality of our lives. Powerful thing, and it takes work. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7. Notice what the Lord Jesus Christ says, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine. Now, let's pause just for one moment. I want to ask you a question. Where did Jesus get his thoughts? Where did Jesus get his sayings? Now, I want you to think about that before you give me a religious answer. Think about this now. Where did Jesus get his sayings? Well, let's go to the Gospel of John. Hold your place there. Gospel of John, chapter 14. I used to say this all last year when I was teaching on the radio. There's no answer like a Bible answer. Absolutely no answer like a Bible answer. Every time you have a 
biblical question, make sure you answer it with a biblical answer. Don't answer it with theology. It's going to mess you up. Go right to the Bible. Look at John chapter 14. Jesus is speaking, chapter 10. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, now here we go, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Well, where are you getting them from, Jesus? Because you just said the words that you're speaking, you're not speaking of yourself. Then where are you getting them from, sir? He goes on to tell you. It's the Father that dwells in me. He's doing the works. So Jesus said he's getting his words from the Father. There you go. There it is. Right in the Bible. Jesus said that. So let's go back to the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. Where'd you get them from, Jesus? I got them from the Father. Oh, yeah, God, can you see that? This is getting exciting to me already. So, let's see what he said. And doeth them. Now, the word doeth in the Greek simply means practices them. You remember last week we talked about discipleship. A true disciple would adhere to the principles of the kingdom. See, that's what makes you a disciple. That's what makes you a student. That's what makes you a pupil or a learner. You're under instruction. You're receiving instruction, and then you're putting it into practice so that you can get the same results that your teachers get. Right? I mean, isn't that right? I don't care if you're learning how to drive a car. I don't care if you're learning how to hike. I don't care if you're learning how to play the piano. You're watching your instructor, and you do what she does. You do what he does. Why? Because you want to be like him. And Jesus said, if you come to me, and you take these sayings that I'm getting from the Father, and you'll put them into practice in your life, you'll get the same results I'm getting. Glory to God. Go back to the Gospel of uh, John, chapter 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he's going to do them also. Why? Because he's a disciple. He's adhering to my principles. He's putting them into practice. What? He's putting into practice what I got from the Father. And so he's getting the same results that I'm getting. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. Isn't that wonderful news? I can get the same kind of results as Jesus. That's what he said. The works that I do, he'll do them also. See? And I'm going to do them, and you're going to do them the same way Jesus did them. He gets his words from the Father. And see, he told us, go back to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. He that hears these sayings of mine which I got from the Father and begins to put them into practice like a disciple, listen to what Jesus said, I'm going to liken him unto a wise man. In other words, watch this and write this down, please. Putting kingdom principles into practice is a wise move. Please write that down. Putting kingdom principles concepts or kingdom principles into practice in my life is a wise idea. That's a good move. Powerful move. One of the greatest things any believer can do is to put into practice the sayings of Jesus. Why? Because he's putting to practice the, the words of the Father, the words of the kingdom, the way God sees things, how he views things. You don't think God uh, um, directed Jesus wrong, do you? You don't think he gave him some bad things to say and bad things to do, do you? No. He gave him the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. I'm going to show you how to do this thing, Jesus. Say what I say. Do what I do. You'll get my kind of results, see? And Jesus is telling us, hey guys, one of the wisest moves you can make is to take the sayings that I'm taking from the Father and put them into practice in your life. And you'll be like a man that, watch this, built his house upon the rock. If you haven't already done it, please take your pen, circle that word built. You'll notice that I do that kind of writing all through my Bible. I'll highlight and take certain notes to see that. You see that on there? You notice how I did the word built right there in red? See? He built. What does the word built mean? Developed. 
That's what we're talking about, isn't it? We're talking about developing a kingdom mindset. See, we're building something. We're going to the word of God. We're taking the words of Jesus, which he got from the Father as disciples of Christ. We're adhering to his principles. We're going to walk in love, continue in the word. We're going to bring forth fruit. We're going to get kingdom results. See, what are we doing? We're developing this kingdom mindset. We're adhering to his principles. We're going to read the word. We're going to hear the word. We're going to speak the word. We're going to act on the word. We're going to put it into practice in our lives. We're going to study and show ourselves approved under God. A workman, a workwoman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We're disciples of Christ. We want kingdom results. We're building, the Bible says. We're building our house upon the rock. The foundation of the word of God. The infallible word, the sayings of Jesus, the sayings of the Heavenly Father. And we're building something, glory to God. Remember, to develop means we're causing things to grow. Our marriages are being more, more uh, uh, richly fulfilled. We're working on it. We realize that there's an insufficiency here. And we're going to have to build this. And we're going to go to the sayings of Jesus. And we're going to apply them to our marriage. We're going to go to the sayings of Jesus. We're going to apply them to our bodies. We're going to take the sayings of Jesus. We're going to apply them to our finances. Yeah, we're building something. We're developing a kingdom mindset. Now watch what Jesus said. When the rain descends and the floods come and the winds blow and beat upon that house. Now listen, what house? That's a powerful question. Write this down. First write this down. What house? And then write this as your answer. The house that you were building. Yeah, you have to build that house. You have to develop the kingdom mindset. You have to build up your marriage. You have to build up your finances. You have to build up your ministry. You have to build up your business. Yeah, you. The house you built. See, if you take the sayings of Jesus and put them into practice, that's your house. And Jesus said, rains, winds, and floods will come. He didn't say if they come, when they come. They're called the vicissitudes of life. The things that we face all the time. The political climate. The economic climate. The climate in your community. Things going on all the time. Terrorism, ISIS, all kinds of stuff going on in this crazy world. Laws being changed, allowing all kinds of stuff. Men can marry men. Oh, this is all kinds of crazy stuff going on that do not line up with the kingdom principles. They don't line up with kingdom principles. See, and Jesus said, now you're going to have to take my word and build your life on that. So when those rains and floods and winds blow and beat up against what you built, see, on my word, he says, they will not fall, for it was founded upon a rock. See? When those, when, those, when those winds and floods and winds begin to blow, when the vicissitudes of life, the temptations, tests, and trials of life begin to come up against you, and he says, if you built your life on doing what I got from the Father, it will cause you not to fall. You'll make it. You'll have kingdom results. Are you getting this? See, and then he goes on to say, everyone that hears these sayings of mine, the sayings that I got from the Father, and doesn't put them into practice, I'm going to tell you what he's like. He's like a foolish man. Write this down. Not practicing the word of God is a stupid move. Please write that down. Not practicing the word of God is a stupid move. Why? Because the floods are going to come. The winds are going to blow. See, adversity is coming. The vicissitudes of life are coming. Notice in this text here, the storms, the winds, all that stuff came to both people. Both of them heard the words that Jesus got from the Father. One of them put them into practice. In other words, one of them became a disciple. The other one did not. And Jesus said, that was the dividing line. That's going to make the, the, the difference of whether you stand or whether you fall in life. 
See, and we like to blame it on God. Oh, God is trying to teach me. So, no, when he was teaching you, you didn't pull out your pen and your paper and your Bible and take notes and put it into practice. See, you weren't a disciple. If you had been practicing, when the test came, you would have passed. Are you listening to me? This is real, folks. See, this is the dividing line. Whether we're acting upon the word of God or not. Are we really disciples of Christ? I gave you that acid test last week. Just ask yourself, am I adhering to his principles? Am I walking in love? Am I continuing in the word? Am I bringing forth fruit? Those are the four ways you know whether you're a disciple. They're all in the Bible. Jesus said those things. See, that's how you know. If this says Sunday morning run around and talk in tongues and then go home and live like the devil, that's not discipleship. We're talking about day in, day out, the just living by faith, where we're working on something. We're not talking about um, self-piety or self-righteousness or my work. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about a person that will take the word of God seriously. I mean, when you're a disciple, you're adhering to his principles, you're taking your notes, you're writing them down, you take them home and you study them. You meditate on them. You say them out your mouth. You walk in them. When you get offline, you pray. You repent. You get up under the blood of Jesus and you go again. I'm a disciple. I'm a student. I'm a learner. Yeah. I'm a follower of Christ. Glory to God. And when you put that stuff into practice and the storms of life come, then my citizenship kicks in. I begin to realize who I am. And what belongs to me. And how I have the mind of Christ. His thoughts. His purposes. The intents of his heart. I have insight and wisdom for this here situation. See. And I'm learning how to tap into that. I'm learning how to develop that. I want to bring the best out of this thing. I want to cause it to grow. And get to an advanced state. Where I'm getting kingdom results. As a disciple of Christ. Are you getting this? This is so so important to know that I'm a citizen of the kingdom and to know that I have a responsibility as a citizen, certain duties, certain privileges, certain things that are required of me. And one of those things is to develop a kingdom mindset. I sure hope you got something out of this message today. I want to take an opportunity to pray for you. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'm going to give you that opportunity today. If you're in a backslidden state, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life back to the Lord. If there's sickness in your body, I want to say a quick prayer and give it, release healing in your physical body. Would you say this with me? Say, God, I believe the gospel that was preached today. I believe your son Jesus bore my sins in his own body on the tree. I believe you bore my sickness, my disease, my poverty and shame, that he died. He was buried and raised from the dead on the third day. And today I confess Jesus is Lord. I thank you, Father, for your healing virtue flowing through my physical body, ministering healing and health to me. I receive it by faith. I understand that healing is part and parcel of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next week.